Uh, so tessellations are another pattern to do with the flow within a landscape, and this time the flow is um, often information, and it's often a biological system in which that flow is occurring through. And in a biological system, there's a flow of information, flow of nutrients, flow of gases that's required to be distributed through that system. So if it's a tree, for example, the tree needs to draw up water and nutrients and minerals from its roots, needs to transport them through the plant to the leaves, where some of those nutrients will be used in photosynthesis and to create sugars and other gases might be released out from that plant, other gases like carbon dioxide might be absorbed into that plant. So the tessellation pattern is one in which all those nutrients and minerals and, and gases can be distributed within that um, system. And, and we also have a similar tessellation pattern within us. And really what it is, is that from a place where the um, the information is shortest, it starts branching out from that. And each time it branches out, the um, that main distance becomes smaller and smaller. So if this is a, a vein, for example, and this is a vein coming from your heart, like the aorta, initially it's, it's, it's big and it's thick, and then each time it branches, it gets progressively smaller. So these are um, smaller in diameter and thickness than this original branch and then on these ones they get um, thinner again and then from there they get thinner again and that pattern is repeated time and time again and that repetition of that pattern is what the tessellation, tessellation is named after. So it's a pattern that repeats itself to smaller and smaller scales each time it repeats itself. And it's a very useful pattern as far as the transport of, of minerals and, and nutrients within biological systems because there's often a place on the outside of that organism and a place on the inside which is distributing those nutrients and minerals around that organism. So you need to be able to absorb and transfer nutrients and gases into that organism and then out, out of that organism and then to um, bring all those nutrients and gases normally to a heart where it will pump those gases and nutrients throughout the whole body where they can get absorbed into the different tissues or off-gassed into the environment. So yeah, it's a way of organising that. You can see it rivers too, so if there's a, a river structure and there's the headwaters to that river, again they um, have that tessellation structure which is repeated through that landscape. In uh, technology, they're often op um, also making use of the tessellation structure as a way of organising and condensing the information that you can store within a system. So, for example, a microchip that you get in computers these days um, has this tessellation structure as a way of packing in as much um, information holding material within that microchip so that it can store more data. So they make use of this tessellation pattern, pattern to really pack in the, um, the elements within that microchip that can um, hold, hold data. Um, so the application of tessellation in a biological system is again you've got to think about how it's expressed in nature and, and what are the elements that are interacting and and replicating it in a way that makes sense in a, in a, in a permaculture design. So in this case you've got um, distribution of nutrients and, and it's a way of, of, of taking resources or nutrients and spreading them without, within, without a system and then also absorbing things and bringing them back to a place of origin. So in a permaculture design, you might have a, a house and a main arterial driveway in onto that property. You might create a tessellation pattern like this as a way of um, getting pathways to different parts of your property. So from the main um, arterial highway from the main road into your property, it might then branch out into all of these pathways that allow you to access the different parts of your property. And the benefit of doing this is by having 
uh, way that structures the um, pathways. It's you know, Im imitating a pattern of nature, so instead of being too kind of non-organized and, and, and disorganized, it, it kind of organizes and groups that, um, that element you want to structure in your system. So it has aesthetic appeal, it has functional appeal, and it allows you to access and make good use of all these different parts of your property. Because the better the access to the different parts of the property, property the more um, productive use of that property you can make. And the more beneficial edges you create within that system where you can increase productivity from. So um, organisational pathways would be um, one good use of a tessellation pattern.